Hi, I'm Rebecca Robeson with Robeson Design in San Diego, California. And today I'm going to teach you how to make a sparkle ball. Here's what I used. A string of lights, and these are 50 lights. You're also going to need a total, if you want to do this ball, a total of 50 cups. You're going to do them in two different halves. This is the first half, and I'm going to demonstrate exactly how I got there. And you're going to need a special stapler. You'll need a drill. You can have an electric one or a battery operated one. And you're going to have to get a drill bit that matches the same size as your actual Christmas lights that you used. And you're going to need a few clothes pins, and that makes it easy. You must have nine ounce solo cups in the soft version so that you can drill your hole through it. I bought a bunch of different sizes and found out the hard way it was impossible. Nine ounce solo. Also, be sure to plug them in first before you start to use them because I'd hate for you to go to all this work and them not turn on and then be completely frustrated. So make sure they work first and you're ready to begin. Now the key to drilling your cups is to do them in groups of 8 to 10 at a time. Make your holes through the center of each cup and you should probably double check to make sure that they're wide enough for your lights. I separated my cups in a stack of 12, 9, and 4. That's what you're going to need. Starting with 12 cups, we're going to make our first ring. And now we're ready to start stapling. This stapler is amazing and the reason you need this one is because the neck here is long enough to go all the way down in the cup, otherwise it's going to be a very, very long, tedious process. This is made by Arrow and it's called the P35. I ordered it online. Using your trusty stapler, staple your cups together one by one. It's important that you place your staples as close to the bottom of the cup as possible. This will give you the most flexibility, which I'm going to show you why that's important later. For our second row, we're going to need only nine cups, and we're going to staple these together the same way we did for row one. Trust me, it's all about the cups and the stapler. You also need to make sure that you get the staples that go with it, because it's a heavy-duty stapler, and the regular staples won't work. On this one, you're going to see it's a little tighter, and what it does is it causes the, the ring not to go flat like this, but to kind of turn in, which is exactly what we want it to do. This is the part. Look how that fits in there. Now this is where the clothes pins come in. And you just kind of clip it in about three or four different spots. This is to keep it in place so that as this thing sort of morphs into shape, it's where you want it. And then, rather than staple every single one, you're going to do like every other one-ish. Because you want to have the flexibility of the cups right now to get your round shape. And then later you'll go back in and you will add more staples to make it secure. Pretty cool? Let's end it with four cups. One, two, three, four. This one you're just going to place wherever you want to in the ball and staple near the bottom. Kind of take some arm power. I don't have a lot of. I think that's going to be my New Year's resolution. Start working out. And then you put the third one in. And look, there's a spot for the fourth one. Voila, you're done. A little easier if you hold it up this way, I think. Now, where you had those clothespins before, just go through and see where you need a staple where you didn't have one before, because you're keeping it fluid. And make sure that every cup, pretty much, is stapled onto another cup. I just wanted to give you a quick reminder there still is one more week left for you to enter the spinner contest. Now, if you know what I'm talking about, we are not asking you to spin. Now, these are spinners that we use on our Christmas ornaments every year. If you've been watching our Christmas decorating videos, you know that Rebecca loves the spinners, and so do most of you. So we're giving away a dozen of them. You can enter the contest, seven more days left, 
And all you have to do is just go to the show more box below, click on the link, and just follow the prompts. Enter to win. So I already created one half of the ball for you so we'd save some time. And you'll see that the next step is to thread the lights through the holes. Your very last thing here, your last cord, because you want it to stick out, you're gonna start with the outside ramp. Don't start in the middle or your cord will not be long enough. So here I go, this will be my last one. And I'm gonna work my way out and through the middle. Now I'm gonna take this and just sort of put it outside there so it's not in my way. And then you take these lights and you put them in the ball in a zigzag pattern is the easiest way. And it actually looks good too. Now I understand that you can use 100 lights if you prefer instead of 50. It just means you put two lights into each cup. The sparkle ball demonstration I think is one of the most fun projects to do, but let me just tell you this. I decided that I was gonna make it my own. And to do that, well, I robesonized it. Come back in a couple of days and you'll get to see the upscale version of the sparkle ball demonstration where I make it absolutely over the top amazing. We're almost finished with these lights and it gets a little bit harder as you get to the end, but because I kept the last remaining holes on the outside, this should be the easiest possible that it can be. Push that last one through and here we go. Whoop out a light bulb. If that happens, you just go back in, put your glasses on so you can see what the heck you're doing, and put the light bulb back in its spot. Remember, we got our cord out here and here, so they're right next to each other. That's awesome. I'm going to use our clothespins again, and I'm going to clothespin these to keep it in place, and then I'll secure all the extra staples that I need to use. It's actually a really fun project to do, so I highly recommend you do it. And as long as you get the right ingredients, it'll be easy. The last piece of the assembly process is to take both sides of the sphere and staple them together. All right, that's it, last one. And we are, well, one more. Done! about making a sparkle ball is it gives you a huge bling without the money sting. Instead of hanging my sparkle ball, I decided to use it as an accessory. Now just a little design tip, I always accessorize in odd numbers. And here I have five things. One, two, three, four, five. Two of them are sparkle balls. And then I've brought in both a, an acrylic reindeer and a frosted one. The acrylic just picks up the light of the sparkle ball so well. And then I love this lamp with the brass on it. And if you'll notice very closely, just a little tiny thing, design thing, the Eiffel Tower is in that brass color too. I think it pulls it all together. I would love to know, number one, are you gonna make a sparkle ball? And number two, if you do, how are you gonna display it? You plan on hanging it? Or do you think you might try something like this, where you set it out as an accessory piece? Ropes and Design uploads brand new videos every single Monday at noon. We have a reality show where we take you along for the ride. We show you some of the most amazing interior design projects and we have a lot of fun doing it. I hope you'll consider subscribing to our channel and come back every week and join in the fun. Subscribe.